Here we have question number two, part B, October, November 2017, paper four, variant two. It's a question about surface area and volumes. Part B, B part one is about surface area and cost of painting something. So now, what we need to do here is we need to um, calculate the cost of painting this cone that's shown, uh, with, which has a radius of 5 centimeters and it has a vertical height of 12 centimeters. We know that the total surface area is painted at a cost of 0 0.015 dollars for every square centimeter. So every square centimeter costs 0 0.015 dollars to paint. And we've got to calculate the cost of painting the whole cone. Now it's a solid cone, and it says the total surface area, all right? So if it's solid, that means it has a base. So there's going to be something here to paint, all right? And there's a clue where it says the total in bold. The question tells us A equals pi RL. Now they're talking about not the total surface area, but the curved first surface area, the, the, the area of the curved part of the cone. Okay, not the flat part, which is the base. So this is the the uh, the area of the base. Okay, pi L as sorry, not the area of the base. This is the area of the curved part of the cone. And as for the area of the base, as for the area of the base, the area of the base is going to be a circle of radius five. So it's pi r squared. Okay, so let's just take each of those. So the area of the base is pi times 5 squared, which is 25 pi. And the area of the curved part of the cone is pi RL. Now we know what pi is, and we know what R is. We have to find what L is. Now L is not this height here. This is the vertical height. We want the, it's the perpendicular or the vertical height. We want the slanted height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line in here, which is actually that 12 centimeters but drawn inside the cone. From the base to the top, that, that length is 12. I know, I know the radius of the cone is this, which is 5. So therefore, I can find the slant height. Is this where the radius meets the base? It's going to be a right angle. Okay, that's the perpendicular height, 12. See? So now, we have a right angle triangle where we know the hypotenuse. Well, we know the two shorter sides. We have to find the hypotenuse. It's actually a 5, 12, 13 triangle for those people who know the Pythagorean triples. However, if you don't, you can just say, okay, L is equal to the square root of, it's the, sh it's the longest side, the hypotenuse, so it's going to be 12 squared plus 5 squared. Okay, so L is going to be the square root of 144 plus 25, which is 169, which from the beginning, many of you would have realized that's going to be 13 because it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, like you have 3, 4, 5 triangles. These numbers are called Pythagorean triples. Anyhow, you don't, if you didn't know that, there's not a big problem. You just know now you're going to put 13 instead of the L. So 13 times 5 is 65, so you have 65 pi. So the total surface area of the whole cone is going to be 65 plus 25, which is 90. So you have 90 pi. Okay, now that's not our answer. They didn't ask us to find the surface area as our final answer. They asked us to find the cost of painting the cone. And we know the cost for one centimeter squared. Now this is going to be in centimeter squared because all the units we used were centimeters. So the cost of, of painting the cone is going to be the um, cost for one centimeter times multiplied by the, the number of uh, centimeters squared. So the cost for one centimeter squared times the area of the whole cone surface area will give us the cost of painting the whole cone. So it's 0 0.015 multiplied by 90 pi. Okay, so you put that, you can just stick that into your calculator and get your answer for that. So you have 0 0.015 multiplied by 90 pi. 90 times pi. Okay, that gives us the answer as 27 over 20 pi, which to 3SF will be $4.24. So $4.24, 4.24. Okay, it's 24. It's currency, so it should be to two decimal places. Okay, so if, if it's not in a 
if it's not uh, an exact answer. So four point two four dollars. Okay, that is the answer to part one. Okay, I'll make part two now. Um, part two, B part two says the cone is made of metal and is melted down and made into smaller solid cones with radius 1.25 centimeters and perpendicular height 3 centimeters. So the big cone, okay, which had its, let's just tidy that up a bit. The big cone, okay, which had its vertical height as, as 12 and its base as 5, is melted down into make, to make smaller cones whose radius is 1.25 and whose height is 3. We want to find how many small cones could be made from this big cone. Now, because it's melted down, its shape doesn't really matter in terms of the volume. Okay, it's, it's going to be recast and all of it will be used to make these smaller cones. Okay, so what we can do is we can find the volume of the big cone, which is, now the volume of a cone is given by a third times pi r squared h, which I think is given in the question. Okay, a third pi r squared h. A third times pi times the square of the radius times the h. Third times pi r squared, the base area times the height. So for the, if I want to find how many of these small cones will fit into the big cones, I'll take the volume of the big cones, okay, divide by the volume of the small cones. It'll tell me how many of them can be, can fit into that. So the big cone is a third times pi times r squared, which is, what's the big cone? It's 5 squared times 12. And the volume of the smaller cone is a third times pi times 1.25 squared times 3. Okay, now the third pi's will cancel out. Okay, the 3 will cancel out with the 12, leaving with 4. Okay, so you end up with 4 times 25, which is 100, over 1.25 squared. Okay, and if you calculate that, 100 divided by 1.25 squared, let's see what happens. We're going to have 100, move this out of the way, 100 divided by 1.25 squared will give us our answer. Oops. Whoops, divided by. Sorry about that. Silly me. I knew that was something funny about that. That gives you 64. Okay, 64. Be very careful when you, pre when you press your calculate buttons. And also be very sure that you write your steps. You see what I did there is I put 100 minus in my calculator instead of 100 divided by. Okay, of course I only did it to show you and teach you that, uh, you know, you, you should be careful about making these mistakes. You know, your teachers never make any of these mistakes, as you well know. Um, but you see, it serves the purpose of you learning that if you do, for example, make that mistake and you didn't, and you press the minus instead of the divide, you wrote the wrong answer down, all of these steps here show the examiner you know exactly what you were doing and you didn't just pick out your answer from the lucky bag, that you made a mistake somewhere in your calculator and that caused you to lose only uh, one mark instead of losing three marks, you see? So it's a good way for you to save your marks. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and we'll continue later. later.